In this video, I'm going to show you how to move sections of logic into a simple user module. So I've created a basic program here. I just have a couple items of logic. I'll just show you what it does quickly. It has an analog initialize where you select an item. This will set the value, the analog value of this menu item variable. That goes to the analog equate and it's evaluated if it's one, then menu item was selected, two is selected, three or four are selected. And this is actually a strategy that I use quite a bit. Um, I call it an init equate pair. It's a little bit more flexible than using an interlock, but it's essentially an interlocked value. The other thing that I've added here is menu item changed. So I use a serial analog one shot, run this analog signal in as the receive, just put a pulse for 0.1 seconds. And then I've got a pulse here, menu item changed pulse. So this isn't really doing much. I just wanted to demonstrate a little bit of logic in a program that we could move into a simple user module. So if we go to the file menu here, there's new simple program, new simple module, that's a UMC user module, and a new simple plus module, that's a USP in simple plus. Uh, you can do it that way, or there's buttons here actually for new simple module and new simple plus. Now, don't press it yet, because if you press that right now, it's going to take over this instance of Simple Windows. So I'm actually going to open another instance of Simple Windows and create the module in there. And the main reason for doing this is that I want to copy this logic over here. So I want to have both of them open at the same time. So this is a new instance of Simple just launched, and I'm going to go File, and then right from here I can go New Simple Module. Most of this stuff doesn't matter for basic modules and basic usage. Uh, we don't really need a hint. We don't really need help. Um, dealer name, programmer, that stuff doesn't even really matter. ASCII, you can just leave this as default. The category here is where it shows up in the folder structure of user modules. That's not really all that important. Um, what is important is what type of system you're compiling for. If you make it as a two series module and you're trying to insert into a three series or four series program, the module will not show up in the list. So 3 Series, 4 Series, that's basic. That's pretty pretty fine for most cases. Module help, you can put stuff here so that when people press F1 on the module, they'll get some help. And I 99% of the time don't do anything with device support or connection logic. So I'm just going to go OK. And it's created something that looks very much like my simple program. The difference is it has no hardware definitions. So it's got a logic folder. Instead, it's got a section called define arguments, and that's what the module looks like when it appears inside this program. And I'll show you what that means in a second. So what I'm going to do next is copy my logic over from the main program. So this is my main program. I've got all my logic in this menu folder. I'm going to press Control X to cut it. And over here, Control V to paste it. So now there's nothing in my program and it's all inside here. Now the thing that we need to do to get things in and out of this module are via this argument definition. And this used to confuse the heck out of me when I first looked at it because typically inputs run on the left side, outputs go on the right side. That makes sense, except this is the context of how this module looks in the parent program. So I'm going to show you what I mean here. We need to have these coming into the module to set. So I'm going to select these and put them here. And then the equate, we'll have these on the output. Notice this is green. It could be either digital, analog, or serial. It's basically ambiguous at this point until you tell it, until you apply a signal that's a certain type. And we're actually not going to extract this red analog menu item. We don't need that in our main program. So we're going to keep that out, but I'm going to add a blank space, and then I'm going to add that pulse. This pulse is going to show up here. And since this is a blank space, we are going to use a special keyword with a tile D. Um, so that's square bracket tile D unused and then tile the square bracket, close square bracket. And you'll find that information if you press F1 on about user modules. So right here in the help file under define signal cues, 
This it was where it talks about that unused. And that will basically show up as a blank and I'll show you what that looks like. And there's other advanced cues that you can use as well. I'll let you look into that yourself. Begin and end group basically gives you an expanding group. So let's go back to this here. And what you'll notice, remember F2, that's something I use quite a bit to see where things are routed. So on the initialize, if we press F2 to see where this is coming from and where it's going from, going to, you get this. And this is where it gets confusing. And this is what will probably mess you up the first few times that you use modules. There's no driving source. And what the heck? Like there should be a driving source. It's coming from the program. But because the way that this appears, think of it as this is how the symbol appears in the parent program. So the inputs are going into the module, the outputs are coming from the module. Inside the module here, it's backwards. So you just have to realize that. And if you're looking at things like, um, these are red, the text is red, it means that there's no driving source. Well, there actually is a driving source. It's just inside the module, it's coming from the program. So it's, it's really kind of confusing when you go to trace them out. So you got to keep your head on your head on your shoulders and make sure that you know what's going on. So next step, how do I get this into my program? Well, notice that it's still untitled. I haven't saved it yet. So the first step is save as. And I'm going to make sure it's in the same directory. I'm just going to call it owl user module. UMC. I'm going to save it there. And the way that simple works, you can have your modules in user directories and program directories. I'll just show you quick here under preferences. You can define where your simple user modules are. That's the UMCs, the simple plus, which is USP. This is a file structure in your, on your computer. I don't really like using it that much unless I've decided that I want to use a module for multiple programs and it's going to be kind of my one of my standard ones that I use I like to use the modules inside the program directory the reason that I do that is it's easier to deal with them I find so right now this has been saved so that should have been updated in context of the program directory but it might not let's just check here alt y opens a symbol library and you'll see here it's expandable project modules this is my module and it follows the file name and I can drop it in here and let's just make this bigger here open it up and that's what I was saying before where it is the argument definition this is exactly how it appears it's gonna close with alt y the left side this is exactly how it appears inside the parent program let's say I wanted to add a fifth item so I go alt plus there I can go alt plus on this side you just press f4 to increment and increment and then I got to chase these down I'll press f2 on here and I'll expand my analog initialize and then I will also expand my analog equate and you can do the same thing with parameters f4 will increment it so now I've updated this so it actually handles five instead of four. And because I did my pulse this way, instead of using OR gates, I did it on the change of the analog. I don't even have to update that. That's why it's kind of handy to do stuff that's modular like that. So if I save this, it may update in the other program. It actually popped up with this window saying that it needs adjustment. So I think it did update it. I'm just going to check. So you got to keep your head on your shoulders and think straight about what program you're working in if you're inside the module or inside the main program. But it did update it. If it hadn't updated it, you can always go project. I believe resync project would do it. And that reloads the modules from disk. So if it had additional inputs and outputs that didn't catch last time or didn't catch automatically, they would be synced up. I try not to use this very much. You see the not responding simple kind of gets a little bit 
finicky on me sometimes. I'm just going to pause and we'll jump back when it gets back. So it finally came back. It popped up with this resync status saying everything's up to date, no changes. So from here we can connect, I could connect the touch panel. I don't even have one in my example here, but you could see how these would come from button presses on the touch panel and you could feed different pop-up pages and you could use that pulse for something. So that was a quick and basic run through simple user modules. In another video, I will show you how to do modules at a very basic level with Simple Plus. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please like the video here on YouTube and subscribe to the channel to be notified when new videos are posted. If you have any comments or thoughts, please include them in the comments below. I love to have discussions with people and I love to hear feedback on what I've created and ideas on other stuff that people want to see.